Hey friends, back with you today in this video, we're gonna talk about Power Apps Component Enhanced Properties, specifically Action Property Return Data Type. So really excited about these new enhanced properties. Action Properties is really, really cool because it allows you to execute functionality within your component without having to interact with that, such as a button click, for example. But when you add in return data types, it creates this uh, round trip experience and that goes with action and event. So I'll have another video for events, so stay tuned for that. But in the case of action properties, it allows you to have, like I said, a round trip between your app and your component and then back to your app after the functionality in your components gets executed. So really, really cool. Uh, let's dive in. Take a look. First things first. Who am I? I'm David Warner. Uh, I do some videos and some blogs and I work a lot in the community. Big fan of the community and all of the amazing work that all of you do work for Quisitive. I'm an MVP, Microsoft certified trainer. So uh, reach out if you'd love to collaborate. Love working with each and every one of you in the community. And thank you for all that you are doing. So the agenda for our video here today, we're going to talk about component libraries, a little bit of an overview there because there's a lot of value in using not only components, but inside of a component library so that you can get the most use out of your components. They're reusable across apps. Super, super cool. Then we're going to have a little bit of an overview again on action properties, uh, exactly what they are so that you understand the benefits of them. Uh, and we're going to talk about those return data types. And then we're going to see an actual demo of implementing a action property return data type. Now, I will say that this demo is going to build upon a prior demo I did. Uh, so maybe if you haven't already become familiar with action properties or the other enhanced properties, maybe pause this, go back and watch them. But if you're good to go or you just want to learn from here forward, all right, let's go forward. So first up is what exactly is a component library? Well, it's the opportunity to build components within an independent entity. What does that mean? It means that all your components will live outside of a single app. They can then be imported into multiple apps and then be utilized. Well, the beauty is that it creates this centralized repository opportunity. So multiple apps can inherit the components that live within these component libraries. And then when you need to make changes or upgrade features or whatever the case may be to your components, you go to your library, you update the component, components, you publish it, and then any app that uses it will be alerted, hey, a change has occurred, come get it, it's awesome, you can update them, and they all are being used in those multiple places. And uh, you know what, hey, it's awesome because you only got to change it in one place. So super scalable, super consistent, uh, very, very valuable, love them, look further into them, got other videos on them, so take a look. So let's get into action properties. Just as a reminder, what exactly is an action property? Well, it essentially allows you to execute functionality within your component without necessarily interacting with the component. So that sounds confusing. What does that mean? What's a real example? Well, let's say you've got a component that displays a variety of things and you've got buttons that do different things inside your component. Typically to utilize that functionality, you got to click on those buttons, right? But now you can create an action property that simulates simulates the clicking or invokes the clicking of that button. And then your app can call that action property. So without actually clicking on the button in the component, you can execute the functionality that is associated to that button. Okay, then, so if you're comfortable with that, then the big question is, well, okay, how do return data types fall into the storyline here? Okay, well, let's look at some of the benefits. The benefits of an action property is, as I just mentioned, you can execute activity or functions or action inside the component, but triggered within the app. So like I said, a button click without clicking the button. And of course, we have the ability to optionally pass parameters to the component. We'll see an example of that. Now, what are the return type benefits? What's the benefit of adding a return type? Well, now, after that functionality or action scripts or whatever have taken place inside the component, you can return something back to the app. So it's like this return trip, right? This round trip. The app requests or executes something within the component. Component does the work and then it also returns something back to the app and the app can then do something with that content, right? So instead of just having a, okay, I'm requesting something, I'm going to tell the component to simulate or invoke the button click without actually clicking the button, that's the end of the relationship, right? Now with return data types, you can actually extend that relationship and it turns into this round trip experience. Very, very cool. So what's that demo look like for us then? So we're going to invoke a social share button outside the components. So our component's gonna have some of these button shares that allow us to share to Twitter and X, and it's gonna simulate that. So we're gonna use the button in the app. We're gonna replicate the clicking of that button without actually clicking it. 
And then inside the action property function, we're going to return back to the app the image of the current badge that's displayed inside the component, whether the component's visibility is displayed or not, right? So again, what does this result in? It results in a round trip using the app to invoke the functionality, and then that information, we can define whatever information we want, gets returned back to the app. So it's this round trip experience, and then the app can do something with that, all right? So let's dive into the actual Power App Studio and take a look. Okay, so here we are in Power Apps. Now, I've already got a component created, so I'll walk you through, we'll set the context. In this case, I've got an image, I'm sitting in my components, right? So we know I'm there, I'm sitting in components. Uh, I've got an image here, uh, which is simply just an image pointing to our Credly account of our badges, right? So in this case, I'm showing off the powerful devs badge. And I've got these buttons that just simply notify. Now, I'm just using the notify function. Uh, of course, ideally, this would actually do something real with this URL. Uh, it's a shortcut URL to post to Twitter or post to LinkedIn or Blue Sky or whatever the case may be. All right. Now, also inside of my component, I've got this action property. Now, it's an output property, uh, which is what an action property is. Right? So if I click on that, we see that it's action. Uh, my return data type currently is none, right? So it's just going to do what it's going to do, and then it's going to end, right? So uh, I've also got social network set up as a parameter. And so what happens is because I've got a parameter set up, what happens is in my app, I'm able to pass in a value in place of this social network. So it's essentially a variable, right? It's a parameter. And then based on that, I'm going to simulate or invoke the clicking of each of these buttons. Right. So now my app can simply say, hey, I'm going to call this action uh, property as a function and I'm going to pass in the social network. And depending on what value that I pass in, simulate the button click of each one of these. That's where the button to share uh, is clicking on each one of those. Right. Button to share X is that one. Button to share LinkedIn is, is that one, et cetera. Right. So button to share blue sky is right there. Of course, the color coding helps. So that's awesome. Uh, right, so that's how my component is set up. So let me close that, close that, and let me come over to my uh, screen in my app. And what we'd normally do is we'd invoke that by clicking on any one of these buttons. But again, with the action property, I don't need to. So I've got this app button, and you can see right up here, I've got the action props component because I've added that component to my screen. So that component is added to my screen, and now that property, that action property, act share to social, along with the parameter is being passed in. So theoretically, what should happen now is when I click this button, I should get a little notify with the URL that says that I'm going to click the LinkedIn, right? So when I do that, bam, we see that, great. OK, that's exactly what we want. Right. And normally it would functionally do like a link uh, LinkedIn connection and do something with it. We're just using the notify as an example. So if I change this to X, right, that was the parameter and click on that. Now, of course, we see the X. So everything is working as expected. We are setting this up. It is a component. We're using an action property. But let's introduce another transaction to this component property, and that is a return data type. So what we'll do is instead of just clicking this app button, invoking or executing the action property functionality, and that being the end of it, what we want to do is we want to return back to the app the image that's being displayed, and then the app can do something with that. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert an image right here uh, inside the app. Remember, I'm inside the app, so I'm inserting an image. I'm going to move that down here so we know that it's more closely aligned with my app. Uh, and when I click this, we want the component to return this image. Uh, and so we're going to do that by going over to our component. We'll go over here. We'll go back to our output property. And I'm going to open this up. Uh, because what happens is a uh, little you know, tip here, when you change the return data type, it's going to modify what your value is. So uh, you know, pro tip, copy this out. <laughs> Don't want to lose it. That would really, really kind of stink. And that would be like, right? You don't want that. So I'm just going to copy this to my clipboard. Uh, I'm going to change the return data type to image. And so now what happens is when I execute this action property from my app, the expectation is that this action property will return an image back to my app. So I'm going to click image. I'm going to click save. It's going to say, are you sure you want to update? Yep. Uh, and you see that it inserted sample image. It would have replaced my value altogether. 
right? So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get rid of this, and I'm gonna paste in. Now, first thing you might notice is we get a couple of errors, right? It's already erroring there, we, uh, which is alerting us, we see it's erroring there. And of course, we can see what that is by hovering over the error underline right there, right? So tells us expected image value. So it's because we have identified that this action property, uh, if we look at the details of it, is expecting a return data type of image. So while we have all this functionality here being executed, that's fine, but at the end of our property, it needs to return an image. Now we could put an image per uh, each of these if statements, if we wanted to, we could get robust and say, well, if it's X, it's gonna be a different image. If it's LinkedIn, it's gonna be a different image. In this case, we just simply wanna return the image of the displayed badge right here, right? So what I'm gonna do is we know that that particular badge is tied to that uh, control right there, image badge one. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just gonna type image badge one dot image right? Uh, and I'm good to go. Now that particular clicking on that particular image, it's just a URL over to the Credly image. We'll change that to show that it is going to dynamically work. But that is how we set that up. And now we see that error has gone away. So we're satisfying that requirement that this particular property is going to return an image. So then the next question is, well, how do you use that return property within the app? Let's take a look. So we'll start by going back over to our app, or in this case, the screen, right, which is representative of our app. And we'll go into where we are currently executing that particular action property. So we're doing that right here. We know that works. Um, but in this case, how in the world do we take advantage of what's being returned? There's, there's nothing here that we, we can grab. There's no additional property. Uh, if we do that, there's nothing there for us. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, what we have to know is that it's declarative, right? So when we are executing this function right here, it is eventually going to return the data type. Originally, we had none. So this was the end of our transaction with the component. We just told the component, go do something. It went and did it. Uh, we were done. But now we're expecting something to be returned. And that return content has to be put somewhere. So what we can do is we could add it to a variety of things. What we're going to do here is we're going to add it to a global variable. And so the way we do that is we just change the way we're calling. I'm just going to comment that out for now. And I'm going to actually copy and paste it. Uh, and I'm going to say set. Uh, and I'm just going to set a variable. We're going to call it var action return image. Right. And now I'm going to paste in the execution of my uh, of my uh, action property, right? Okay, so now we're making that work. Everything's good to go. Uh, and if I click on this now, you can see that that's an image, right? It sees that that's an image because that's what's actually being returned by that action property. So it knows because all these things are tied together, right? Uh, and so now when I click on this app button, which is on my app side, right? I'm not clicking on any one of these. It's going to invoke the clicking of that button if I've got X, right? So that's what's happening there. And then if I change all of that, change X to LinkedIn, it's going to invoke the clicking of that, etc. And what's going to happen is that as the action property gets executed, it's going to return whatever the image that's being displayed in my component is. All right, cool. So let's test that. Uh, if I click on this app button, we should get a notification that uh, is going to notify or, or invoke the notify function and show the URL. But it also should then populate this variable right here right now with the image that is being displayed. So if I go over to variables, over here, we see that because I've instantiated that, we see it's showing up here, but it says blank, right? So we see right there, it's showing that it's blank. I haven't clicked the button yet. So of course nothing has happened, but it does know or expect it to be an image. So now when I hold down Alt and I click that button, and I refresh here, now we see an image. Oh, bam, right? That is exactly what we expected. Okay, but why is it not being displayed there? Well, that's simple. We never set this equal to the variable. So I'm gonna take that value. I'm gonna go over to, remember this is on the app side. I'm going to click there. It's just using sample image and I'm going to click there. Awesome, okay, cool. So now how can we prove that this is working? Well, theoretically, what we should have, uh, have to do is we'll go back into our component and maybe we're making the display of these icons dynamic and that's great, right? But for now, with the badge, I should say, we're just doing it uh, hard-coded. 
Okay. But let's say that there's a drop down and you're able to swap between the different badges that are earned or whatever the case may be. In this case, I'm just simply going to change this badge to be the SharePoint hackathon that just kicked off here recently. So we're excited for that. Uh, powerful devs kind of wind down. So now we're going to swap this out. Uh, and for those that want to share it, they can do that, right? Using this component. So when I come back over to my screen now, theoretically, what should happen is I should click on that. Uh, and you know what, let's change it to LinkedIn. Cause again, it doesn't really matter at this point what social network we're sharing it on because at the end of all our ifs, we were passing back the same badge. We didn't make it dynamic on each if. So let me close that. Now what should happen when I click this button on the app side, I should see the notify. It should show me the LinkedIn URL that was being notified within the component. And then it should pass back the image that's being displayed in the component, which is the SharePoint hackathon badge. And it should update my image right down here. Bam, that's amazing, it's magic, right? Super, super cool. Now you may be thinking, well, where is this valuable? Why would I want this? Well, you may not want to use the display of the actual component, right? I, I could hide the visibility of this component so if I were to do that, and then let's take the general dev. So I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna change this to general dev. So now we're seeing the, the general contributor badge, we're good to go. I'm gonna come back to my screen and I'm going to hide my component. And maybe I've got my own instantiation or UI that shows off the, the badges that a person has earned or their most recent badge or whatever the case may button, button, whatever the case may be within your app. So now when I click on this in my app, holding down the alt key, this should change to the general contributor. Yeah, there we go. Awesome, right? So you can see now we've got that round trip capability between the app making a request to the component, the component doing work, and then the component returning data back to my app and my app can do something with it, which is what is occurring right here. I'm still executing that. I'm still executing the action property, uh, but now I'm taking that return value and I am going crazy with my arrows and I'm able to show and do something with that. So it's this true round trip relationship between the app and the component that's not just one way, it can be two way. So very, very cool. Hope you've enjoyed this. Like and subscribe if you did. Let me know that you liked it in the chat. Looking to create more of these videos and I can do that when I get you as, uh, as subscribers. So thank you everybody. Have a great day. See you in the next one.